What is up guys? Welcome back to DCS World and welcome aboard the FA-18C Hornet by Eagle Dynamics for another tutorial video. In our last video we learned how to taxi and take off. Now let's learn how to actually fly this damn thing. Now the Hornet is quite complex but for good reason. It has a fly-by wire system. What that means is your joystick, this guy down here, is not directly connected to the control surfaces on your wing and tail. Gone. It's not directly connected to them. What is actually happening is when you move your stick, you are actually telling the computer of the system that you want to make the plane do a certain thing. And the system is then going to send commands via hydraulics to the different control surfaces, your elevators, your aileron, etc to make the plane do what you want to do. Now, what that means is that those control inputs are going to be, uh, for one, they're going to be fairly smoothed out as uh, opposed to a simpler flight system where you have direct hydraulic control, such as in the A-10C or in uh, faster jets without fly-by-wire systems, such as the F-14 Tomcat. Um, the Hornet is going to smooth out those inputs it's also going to prevent you, as best it can, from departing the flight envelope, meaning you're going to have a fairly hard time actually getting the airplane to uh, stall uh, or uh, basically get out of control, like into a spin, things like that. The, the fly-by-wire system, also known as the FCS, or flight control system, is going to help prevent that. Uh, it's not perfect you can still get in trouble in this thing if you're uh outside of you know pretty pretty good parameters but for the most part it's going to keep you alive and keep you flying the best it can uh ultimately it's not going to control your throttle and stuff for you so if you get way too slow and try to do something it's not going to like you know you might have a bad time and uh as we all know uh, with just about any combat flight sim the ground has a pk of one so we don't want to let the ground get another kill off of us. So let's try to avoid the controlled flight into terrain as much as possible. So with regards to actually flying the Hornet, uh, right now I'm in just a standard rate turn orbit at you know a little under 17,000 feet above the Persian Gulf map here. And uh, we'll talk about a few things. So I'm just going to roll us out straight and level towards the water. And uh, I actually do have my barometric altitude hold on. I'm going to turn that off. I'm also going to turn off my auto throttles. So I am in full control of the airplane right now. The FCS is really neat in that what it's trying to do essentially is it's auto trimming for you. So if I were to pull my nose up, for the most part, it's going to keep me at this nose up attitude regardless of what my speed is. I mean, it's going to vary a little bit depending on the speed and I'll explain why in a second. Or I could pitch my nose down and it's going to hold it. I could get into a bank. It's going to hold that bank angle for me. My hands are off the controls right now. Other way. It's going to hold that bank angle. And because of that functionality, it makes the Hornet really easy to fly. It's a very point-and-shoot sort of airplane. Now, what the FCS is actually doing as far as auto trim, notice my G-meter there on the HUD that I pointed out in the instrumentations video. What the FCS is doing at all times is it is auto trimming your airplane for 1G at all times. So, if I go into this turn here. It's trimming my airplane for as close to 1G as it can get. It's, you know, holding 1.1 here. I actually noticed that it was starting to pitch down a little bit, and I'm also getting slow, so I'm going to add some power. Notice that I was pitching down a little bit. It's not going to maintain 1.2, 1.3 Gs to keep this level turn. It's maintaining 1G. But in doing so, it's what enables it to sort of basically hold pitch and roll attitudes automatically. 
and it does so really well and you know it's kind of hard to explain in just words you sort of have to feel it for yourself so you'll understand what I mean once you actually get in the air and just start kind of flying around now some general tips for flying the Hornet um, it's a fairly agile plane uh, with the FCS it also has some automatic control surfaces we've got leading edge flaps trailing edge flaps uh, I've mentioned the ailerons there as well as the elevator on the tail and the rudder. Uh, as I mentioned, most of that is trimmed automatically for you, but with our control stick, you know, we obviously can manipulate it and make the airplane do some things. So I'm getting into a nice steep turn here, pulling like three to four G's, which is good. Leveling out. Getting our speed back up. I have my controls indicated on down in the lower left corner there so you can see what my controls are doing. You can see my stick position and my throttle position. That little hash mark where the throttle is sort of sitting, uh, that represents full military power. And what that means is that is the max power that the engines will create without going into afterburner. If I go beyond that, we're now in full afterburner. And to prove I'm in full afterburner, Here's F2 cam. I'm just going to look behind the airplane. You can see the afterburners are lit. If I pull the throttles back to mill power, the afterburners turn off. So if you ever hear someone say mill, uh, mill power versus full burner, that's what they mean. They're going full power without going into afterburner, and then obviously full afterburner is throttles full forward into afterburner and watch your fuel gauge unwind. Some nifty things about the Hornet, uh, it has very high angle of attack performance. So for example, if I get into a very sharp turn here, my throttle is at mill power. You can see my speed is starting to drop and my alpha is climbing 20 degrees. 17, let's get it up over 20, 25. We can pull pretty hard. We're actually at a really high alpha. Maintaining roughly level flight, descending a little bit because we're getting kind of slow. 20 degrees alpha, 25 degrees alpha, still flying, still flying. And we'll level out and regain some speed. And that's what the Hornet does best. It has very good high angle of attack performance. You can still pitch and roll at very low speeds and very high values of angle of attack. Uh, and it's what one of the things that makes the Hornet uh, pretty deadly in a dogfight is it be, is because it can get really slow, and uh, it may be up against other jets that can't get very slow, and thus the Hornet will be able to outmaneuver and uh, basically you know, outflank and outmaneuver the adversary in a dogfight. Uh, but just for general flying, you know, you don't need to pull super hard on the stick. You don't need to pull a whole lot of G's for the Hornet to be good. Um, the Hornet has a soft G limit of about 7.5 G in a full high speed, full deflection turn. Let me see if I can demonstrate that here. Let me get up to about 300 or so knots. A little over 300, 320. And then I'm going to turn and pull really hard. And it's actually not even letting me get up to 7 G's there. I need to be going a little bit faster. But the Hornet has a soft limit of 7.5 G's. Now, that G limiter can actually be overridden. So the... Uh, autopilot disengage slash nose wheel steering disengage button, also known as the paddle switch, uh, doubles as a G limiter override button. So if I press and hold that button and then go full aft stick, I've then overridden the G limiter of the airplane and now it can pull up to about, uh, I believe it's nine, nine and a half G's. 
and I didn't get quite that hard there because I'm not going fast enough, but you also heard Bitch and Betty go off saying flight controls, flight controls. In most flight circumstances, using the G-limiter override is reserved for emergencies only. And uh, in the real airplane, if you were to pull the G-limiter override and pull more than 7.5 Gs, you can actually overstress and break parts of the airplane. You're not necessarily going to snap your wings off, but you know you might bend something. It's just generally not a good idea. Uh, that's really about it. I mean, there's not too much to say about the Hornet. It's really easy to fly. You kind of just have to get a feel for it yourself and what it can do. It rolls really well, so I can do a full left aileron roll there. Uh, getting over 400 knots now if I wanted to dive a little bit and pick up some speed. Maybe get into burners. And pull up at about 4.5 to 5 Gs. Keep pulling. We'll do a little loop-de-loop -loop here. Relax the stick. Keep pulling. Speed's going to come back up, pull up on the stick a little more. Pull in about 5 Gs and we're nice and level again. Little loop-de-loop -loop in the Hornet. As I mentioned, very agile. You can do things like a snap roll, inverted, and pull. Pulling almost 7 Gs there, doing a little split S, trading about 7,000 feet of altitude. Keep turning, keep turning. You can maintain a good a good rate turn here. Uh, we'll usually go full burner. And, you know, uh, pull on the stick. Just keep the turn going. We're turning pretty tight here. If we look at the ground, we're pulling a nice tight circle around that spot on the ground there. Maintaining about 270 knots or so. Um, a lot of these things, like I mentioned, you kind of have to get a feel for it yourself. It's kind of hard to explain some of the flying dynamics of this airplane, but um, it's just, it's kind of a joy to fly because it's nice and easy. It's somewhat carefree. Um, some people like that. Some people don't. I personally do like that. It allows me to focus more on my mission. I don't have to fight with the airplane because the airplane is going to take care of you for the most part with the fly-by-wire system. That's really all I have to say on that, guys. Uh, get up in the air and just fly around. Get a feel for it. Uh, that's the best I can uh, really, best advice I can really give you uh, as for flying the Hornet. So get up there, have fun, and I'll see you for the next video where we'll learn how to land this airplane. See you then.